Good afternoon and welcome to the Blue Line Metals Edge here for Thursday, November 17th. I'm Phillips Trebel, Chief Market Strategist at Blue Line Futures. If you're watching this video on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to our videos. YouTube will send you out an email notification when a, a new video is posted. Now getting into the markets here, a lot of action today. And really it was a few things here this morning. We saw James Bullard, the Fed president out of St. Louis, he came out and he spoke. It was about 7 a.m. here this morning. And what he said was is that this right here was kind of the interesting thing was that benchmark interest rates um, in the 5 to 7% range may be needed. And I pulled a little snippet out of it. He says that basically it was interpreted as not backing down and that interest rates must continue to a 5 to 7% range. He did acknowledge that there was some financial stress, so it gave the markets a little bit of reprieve, but not much hope at all. He says that the rates that have been done in the market are having little effect. So this guy's definitely very hawkish on the market. Got that dollar index going straight up here this morning, putting pressure on most of the commodities that we like. Now looking at the Fed Watch tool, if you go to December, you can see the probability. This is a 50% or 50 basis point rate hike right here. It's got an 80% chance. It puts it at this 425 to 450. Now you go out and you look at this February, you're going to see that it ticks up. It goes up to this level. That's a 25 basis point or a 50% chance for a 25 basis point uh, rate hike at the next meeting. You go out to March you're gonna see even farther out. So it looks like what Goldman Sachs was outlining was 50 followed by multiple 25. That's not dovish at all. So that's the reason why you're seeing some of these markets turn. You're starting to see the dollar index if you come down here. And this is our Blue Line Edge platform. You guys can always shoot me an email and I can send you out a demo of it. Uh, it's real nice, works with all your accounts. So you can see the dollar index, it's bouncing off these lows. It just hit 107, it's coming off just a little bit uh, at the moment. You do have some speculators coming in the market trying to lift other assets and other currencies so the dollar is coming off. For those of you, again, that have legacy positions on in the dollar index, this stop loss would be below this 200-day moving average, right around 104.60. Now, getting into the U.S. equities, they're all under some pressure here today. And you could see that the way we were setting up yesterday, we were just kind of hugging this uh, support level, and we're starting to break down today. So there is a big air pocket below here. And I was looking at the economic data that's coming out. It's not really much anything. There's this uh, retail sales number. This is over in the UK, and it's all going to be a lot softer, all this data here. And the inflation data should be quite strong. The Fed speaker should be hawkish. We'll see what Christine Lagarde has to say tomorrow, the ECB president. Can she lift that up a bit, put pressure on the dollar index? Maybe you'll get some lift back on the uh, the gold, the silver, and also the metals markets. So getting into like other equities here, you got pretty much a similar chart across the board. You look at the NASDAQ, that's not really, this is not much of a bounce. And this is, this is an empty candle right here as far as I'm concerned. And we're starting to roll back over. The Dow Jones is the one that's hanging on right here. Could be setting up for a flag. If you see a breakout on the Dow, you're going to see that nice extension upwards. The Treasuries, that cup and handle I'm keeping an eye on. The, um... You know, the system that I follow with the algorithm went long on this breakout here. It does have a stop that's down in this area. We might look at some hedges with some call spreads on the 10-year note um, going out to March. So something to keep an eye on. Bonds, same thing. It's got that breakout to the upside. I wouldn't touch the bonds, though, because the farther out you go on a debt instrument, the more... Um, fluctuation you get on price on small changes in interest rates. So that's kind of the relationship. So you're better off sticking with the 10 year note. Now, getting into gold here today, that gold's rolling back over. I mentioned yesterday on here, if somebody really wanted to be crafty, it was again, it was buy the, buy the life jacket before you buy the boat. 
I would buy that 1650 or 1700 put option going out to January or February. You already have that on. Let the market come to you. Then you go long the futures. Now you have a synthetic stop loss. You're not going to get stopped out on that particular trade, nor you can kind of sit back and let it do its thing. Silver really connect, correcting as well. I mentioned copper was the one that really led this big reversal pattern lower than this continue, continuation down. We're sitting right at 368 right now. We might form a head and shoulders top. We'll have to keep an eye on it. We got one shoulder here. We got the head here. We might be able to build off this, come, then come back down. China's been really fluctuating back and forth with their COVID policies. I don't really know what to make about it um, at all. And then you go to oil. Oil's got a correction going on right now. It's right at this support level. We did step into the March um, The March crude oil with some of those micro contracts might add a couple more you got an easy stop loss though you put it right around that 79 dollar level and that's your key level of support looking at the tactical ranges today I'm trying to clean up a few things on here um, on this report trying to give you guys more um more details more like transparency on things so when you see when i send this out in the morning and you already see these things are gray on gold, silver on the downside or the dollar on the upside. You know that we're setting up for a volatility type event on the day. And as the day progressed, we saw silver hit multiple standard deviation move down. Uh, we are at 2043 as your probable support level. The low on silver, 2078 and a half. So this first one is holding right now, but... I don't know how much longer this one's going to hold. So if we break loose on some liquidation in the back half of the day, you're going to see uh, silver move down probably to that 2050 level. Copper's another one breaking down. We're right at this critical level of support on the probable range on the downside. That might open up to about 362. Platinum's one that's breaking down. We took out the 1,000 level. We're at uh, 982 could be that next level of support going lower. And then on the dollar index, this one's still standing, 107.23. You look at the high on the dollar right now, 107.14. So these tactical ranges have been fairly accurate today. And then I do give you the strategies on what, I, what we're doing. They're a bit vague. You can always call me or shoot me a text or an email, like buying extreme breaks. What is that? Well, I'm trying to outline it on here. You know, 1705, I talked to my partner, Bill Baruch. We would look at the micro contracts, try and scale in down to 650, and then look at that, that contract um, support, which was right around 1612 um, as your key level support. Again, on platinum, I'm hoping that it continues to come lower because we're waiting for at the end of the month on November 30th, uh, if you bought platinum and you hold it out to January 26th, it's gone up about $100 on average throughout that time frame. And it's been 15 out of 15 years has been that average. So as far as you know, the E-mini S&P, we do have the 3,600 puts for March for the micros as a backstop play. Not sure how we're going to use that yet. We might use it just as a speculative position if the market washes out. We dump those at the market, try and double our money on it. Or we start to look at, hey, is this a probable level where we're going to hold some support? So we might try that one first and buy the futures against it. Other than that here, Getting into the other markets, we did see sugar finally break. That's been up about 14 days in a row. Corn, wheat, soybeans, they all came off on some news that Russia is extending this grain deal. Not sure how much I trust on them right there. But um, other than that, continue to take some profits on things like you know natural gas. If we get a shoot up, try and, um, try and take profits on your short dated natural gas options. Hold your longer dated. And then again on cotton, try and take uh, profits on your call spread. So that's about it here today. Do a short update tomorrow and then, uh, well, I'll have a great weekend. So we'll see how this goes. Remember, be patient. Don't be the guy that's buying, you know, chasing this gold higher and buying these tops right here after they've had so many days in a row. Or same thing on copper or platinum. Don't be this guy trying to buy this open wick on a thinly traded market in the middle of the night. You know, that's what I got to give you as a rule of thumb. So if you have any questions, again, futures options trading, feel free to reach out. 312-858-7303. Remember, futures and option trading does involve risk of loss, may not be suitable to all investors. Good luck. Good trading.